Oh, it's beautiful, Mike. It really is. I'm in first grade, and I'm watching Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin dancing around like every other kid who's you know, out there watching this. They want to go do this. This is the coolest thing ever. And I remember asking my dad, what kind of job do I need to have growing up that I can make enough money that I can go fly to the moon? And he goes, well, there's a job out there called being an astronaut, and if you are that, they will pay you to go to the moon. They're going to pay me to go to the moon. Like, yeah, like, that's it. I've made my career decision. I'm going to go be an astronaut. I did not think the experience of spaceflight would change me. And I hear about these people going and having this overview effect and they come back and like, There's, what am I going to go experience out there that's going to change who I am? But it made me think about a lot of things. Uh, and so for the first part, uh, we all had that part where you, you're, you're seeing the earth and you see yourself next to the earth and you feel very tiny next to the earth. Then you turn the other way and the earth seems very tiny compared to the cosmos out there. And so you feel like you're two orders of magnitude down in terms of you know the size of things out there. All of life, all of the history of life, all of your life and everybody you know is in this little tiny membrane of air that sits on top of this planet. And beyond that membrane of air is this abyss of space. It's just, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing life-giving about it. And that's it. That's all that separates you. And, and, and it makes you feel like we're in a very tiny spot out here. As big as the Earth seems, it, it, it seems suddenly very, very finite. One of the things that, that, that got me one day, we had, we had some time off, and I, I wanted to go get some pictures of items that I'd flown up for other, other people out there. And so I'd get out there and I'd, I'd crank open all the different panels on the cupola window. And just by dumb luck, we were flying down the spine of New Zealand. So you've got this emerald green island with all the, the, the mountains and you've got the ocean out there as the backdrop for all these photos. And it almost made me forget to take the pictures because I was too busy gawking at, at New Zealand uh, out, out of the cupola as we went over it. Going on my very first spacewalk, I looked down, and that was my first mistake because this was the Amazon rainforest beneath me. Um, it's February, I guess it's summertime in the southern hemisphere, so I could see all the way down to the to the river itself and all the, the, the dark green lush jungles, the brown river and all the estuaries flowing into it. I can see this muddy delta going out into the Atlantic Ocean, and I could see the gray and snow-capped peaks of the Andes Mountains all out to the west. And so despite my best intentions, Mother Nature was saying, you will not ignore me, you must pay attention. And I'm just sitting there just gobsmacked looking at this thing and trying hard to tear myself away. Fortunately, my lead spacewalker, Steve, he just sat there and said, just take your time and take the scene and you will never see something like this again ever. So you might as well get the experience now. My advice for humanity is this is a great place to start, but don't stick around here very long. We have opportunities out there. I forget who it was who said, if humankind was meant to explore the universe, God would have given us a moon. We need to take advantage of that, um, use that as a, as, a, as a leaping pad to get off into other places. Someday we're gonna need to be from space and not going out there and simply going into it. <laughs>